If there's a list of top movie best friends, Toy Stories, Sheriff Woody is definitely a top five contender. He's charming, extremely resourceful, and he'll never give up on you. And hey, here's an interesting fact about him. Did you know that his last name is actually Pride? Yep, Sheriff Woody Pride. We found more insane stuff about him too, including Easter eggs and some surprising facts. We're excited about this one, so keep watching. We're gonna begin with a few small Woody Easter eggs in other Pixar movies before this list gets bizarre. And we promise it will, so stay tuned for that bit. Let's get started. Hawaiian Vacation, Partysaurus Rex, and Small Fry. If you're a casual Disney and Pixar fan, your first intro to Sheriff Woody was 1995's Toy Story, and then Toy Story 2, 3, and finally 4. But did you know that he's also featured in plenty of Pixar shorts? Yep. Check out Hawaiian Vacation, Partysaurus Rex, and our personal favorite, Small Fry. We recommend binging them. Next, A Bug's Life. Speaking of Toy Story 2, the movie did something pretty unique for an animated feature. The end credits featured a reel of bloopers from the making of Toy Story 2. It was a hilarious meta joke, and we still remember laughing out loud when we watched it as kids back in 1999. We're kind of bummed they don't do this anymore, because they should. Anyway, that's not the first time Pixar did this sort of thing, 1998's A Bug Life did it first. There's one particular outtake where Woody casually slides into a frame as a crewman. He's holding a clapperboard upside down and gives us a sly smile. Audiences must have been psyched in cinemas in 1998. But that's not all. Now, the car version of Woody in Cars. Owen Wilson's Lightning McQueen is one of Pixar's best ever characters, period. Actually, scratch that. Cars itself is one of Pixar's best creations. We watched it right before making this video. Anyway, we caught an interesting cameo in the epilogue. Mac watches a sort of Cars adaptation of Pixar movies in the drive-in cinema. And what do you know? Woody appears as a station wagon along with Buzz as a classy sports car. Now we're gonna want a Cars version of Toy Story. Next, Randy Newman's parting gift and New Horizons. Now back to Toy Story. Randy Newman created a timeless score for all four movies. You've Got a Friend in Me is possible possibly one of the greatest pieces of music to ever come out of a Pixar movie. But let's not forget the first time we see Woody on screen. A soaring piece of music called New Horizons plays when Andy brings out Sheriff Woody to fight against evil Dr. Porkchop. It's one of those tracks that really fills your heart with joy, especially because it reminds you of Woody being a badass sheriff he is. But get this, New Horizons also plays at the end of Toy Story 4, when Woody is saying goodbye to all of his friends. It serves as a callback to his introduction to the franchise, and also an emotional goodbye to a character that stuck with audiences since they were kids. And now, 1001 West Cutting Boulevard. But hey, here's an interesting little tidbit about where you can find Woody if you're sad that he's gone, or rather, where you could find him before the year 2000. Let us explain. There's a really well-hidden Easter egg in Toy Story 2 when the gang's trying to rescue Woody from Al. They ask Etch-a-Sketch to bring a map to Al's toy barn, because that's where they think he's been held. But hold up, if you look closely at the map, you'll see 1001 West Cutting Boulevard on it. Now, it's easy to brush off as a fake address, but it's totally real. Yep, 1001 West Cutting Boulevard was Picture Animation Studios' actual address in 2000 when they moved to 1200 Park Avenue, Emeryville in California. But that's not the last time that address came up in a Toy Story movie. In the third movie, you can see the world's W Cutting Boulevard above Andy's store, probably in homage to their original location. Because if you go there right now, it's just a place for offices and laboratories. Up next, he wasn't always Sheriff Woody Pride. Now we've mentioned that his name's Sheriff Woody Pride, but he didn't always have that name. The inspiration for his name came from the famous 
famous American athlete and actor Woody Strode. He was a deck athlete and football star, and was one of the first black American players in the NFL in the post-war era, so there's a lot of history behind the name. But get this, everyone, including the people at Pixar, called him Sheriff Woody until Toy Story 3. That was when director Lee Unkrich revealed that his last name is Pride. Pretty cool, huh? Now here's something even cooler. And Woody made Toy Story 2 possible. Pixar knew they hit the jackpot with the first Toy Story. The audience, especially kids, gave the movie overwhelmingly positive responses. But did you know that Toy Story 2 wasn't meant for a theatrical release? Yep, it was supposed to be direct-to-video until the studio execs decided to give it a green light for a theatrical release schedule. But it's honestly a miracle the movie even got made considering the challenges it faced. We'll get to that in another video though. So what kept production going? And how did director John Lasseter push forward when things got tough? Simple. He was at an airport and he saw a little boy holding a Woody doll. And that's all he needed. When things got tough, Lasseter thought of the kid holding the Woody doll and kept moving forward. We adore that. But this next bit isn't quite as adorable. Up next, the reel that could have destroyed Toy Story and Pixar. Now, Toy Story 2 had its own challenges. From overworked employees burning the midnight oil to almost getting completely deleted off Pixar's servers. Yep, that happened, and it deserves its own video. But let's get back to Woody. Back in 93, when John Lasseter and his team pitched the idea for a Toy Story movie, Sheriff Woody was completely different. They storyboarded a few scenes, including Andy's birthday, Buzz being pushed out the window, and a scene between Woody and Slinky. The storyboard was made into a reel, which is now known as the infamous Black Friday reel. So check this out. In the reel, Woody shakes hands with Buzz and throws him out of the window. And he has zero remorse. Yep. And in another scene, Slinky gets up on the bed and Woody just rips the poor guy apart with verbal insults. Yeah, it's not a pretty look for our beloved best friend, but it turns out he was originally meant to be a mean-spirited, jealous, and villainous character. Audiences were supposed to get attached to Buzz Lightyear instead, with Woody acting as the story's villain. How do you like that idea? You hate it, right? Well, so did the Disney execs who saw the reel. They hated it so much, in fact, that they shut the entire project down. Then they gave John Lasseter and his team one week to redo the entire thing and change their characters. And thank God they did, because we wouldn't have gotten an amazing franchise if they failed back then. But they did leave hints of an evil, mean-spirited Woody in the third movie. And Lotso is basically evil Woody. Woody. Toy Story 3 is our pick for the best Toy Story movie. It's got action, it's got great comedy, it's got a prison break-esque sequence, and it has Michael Keaton as the Ken doll. What more could you want? And hey, it also gave the franchise one of the best villains ever, Lotso Huggin' Bear. Lotso seemed friendly, but turned out to be a mean-spirited dictator running a children's daycare. But it turns out he's actually an evil version of Woody if things hadn't worked out for him in the first Toy Story. Mind a blown, right? Okay, first up, they're pretty similar in terms of character. They both are leaders of their respective gangs. They're resourceful and they're dedicated. Lotso was also like Woody in the way he never gives up on his friends, but that changed when his owner Daisy replaced him with a different Lotso. Interestingly, both Woody and Lotso go through insanely difficult journeys to get back to their owners. But the thing is, Woody made it back to Andy and Lotso didn't. Woody matured and became an even better character, but Lotso deteriorated and became the mean dictator he is in Toy Story 3. And this isn't a coincidence either. The creatives designed Lotso to be the darker, more evil version of Woody, as confirmed in the movie's commentary track. We're pretty sure they didn't forget about the Black Friday reel either. They changed things around a bit and used the original idea of an evil, bitter Woody to create Lotso. Can you imagine an evil version of Woody? We can't. But we do have an idea. Amazon should totally 
totally make a spin-off of The Boys and have all the Toy Story characters be like Homelander and Soldier Boy. Wouldn't that be cool? It'd ruin our childhoods, sure, but it'd be worth it. And that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for watching. So what was your favorite Woody Easter egg? Did we miss any? And what are your thoughts on the Black Friday reel? Tell us in the comments down below. And as always, hit that like button if you liked our video and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss future uploads. We'll see you next time.